Hello, my name is Steve Packer with Moana Nursery and one of the plant doctors here to talk to you today about some smart landscape design principles that will help you as you design and implement your landscape around your house. Uh, whenever I'm talking to a customer, I, I always say, what are you using this tree for? Well, if, I'm using it, if they're using it for shade, then we want to make sure we get a nice a tree that will get big enough to provide proper shade. If they're looking for a tree for, for beauty and aesthetics, then we get them a flowering tree. So every plant should have a specific purpose in your landscape. Keep in mind too that certain plants do better in the sun and others prefer the shade. So make sure you, you take a close look at your, your landscape and those areas where it's always shady or at least has a half a day of sun, then you want to make sure you put in plants that thrive better in shade. Uh, most plants do better in full sun so in those areas where you get a lot of sun make sure you get the right plants in that location if you put uh, a shade loving plant in full sun it just won't do well it'll survive but it'll always be burnt and it won't be looking good likewise if you put a, a sun loving plant in the shade it just won't perform well at all it just won't bloom and and do as well as, as it should so keep in mind that uh, there's a um, a place for every plant in your landscape. Just make sure that uh, you also keep in mind the, the actual height and size. You, know, you don't want to put a small little shrub in a little planter that will overgrow. And you may want to focus on something that stays a little bit smaller. And if you got a bigger area, then of course you can put in larger shrubs that have room to grow. You don't want to place trees too close to the house or too close to your sidewalk or whatever. Whereas later on down the road, uh, the, the emerging roots can actually crack the, the concrete or, or upset the pavers. Another integral part of most landscapes is turf, grass, that green stuff that we like to lay on, the dogs like to play on, and, and the kids and the grandkids like to play. But we, we are in a real dry climate and uh, uh, turf does require a lot of water. so. If you're gonna put in a lawn, make sure you put in enough to, to satisfy the needs of your landscape. So if you have a dog or kids or whatever, it's okay to have grass, but just put enough to, to take care of the puppy or the kids or whatever else. Keep in mind too that uh, yeah, when you're doing your turf design that you want to design it in such a way that it's easy to irrigate. If you have too many curves and a lot of sprinkler nozzles or heads may not cover properly, so make it easy to irrigate. Also use uh, the turf that does uh, best in, in that area. There are certain, if you have a, a lawn that has a lot of trees and has a lot of shade, then you want to use turf grass seed that does better in the shade. Most seed mixtures are, are blended in such a way that they have a combination of sun leaven and shade leaven seed all combined together. So when you do spread it out, uh, the seed that does well in full sun will do very well, will grow in the sunny areas, and the seed that does well in shade will thrive in the shady areas, so you don't have to really worry about that. Whenever we do any kind of planting, our soils and the trucking metals are not the best. There is very little organic matter in the soil, so we as, as gardeners need to take care of that by adding organic matter as we plant. There are a lot of different formulations out there that you can utilize, but every time you do any kind of planting, you, you want to incorporate compost, either like a 50-50 mixture or a little bit less, by doing that, you help uh, improve the texture of the soil. You're adding organic matter to the soil that kind of helps mo hold moisture and nutrients for the plant. So the plant gets off to a better start. So keep that in mind as you're doing any kind of planting. Make sure that you add organic matter to that area to make sure the plant gets off to a good start. Another important landscape principle especially when you're putting in your, your garden or your landscape, is the use of mulch. Now, mulch is any kind of covering that you put over the soil to kind of help maintain moisture, uh, to help prevent weeds. Mulch is also used to kind of moderate the soil temperature to kind of keep it more even. And uh, also by using mulch, especially the organic types, as it 
continues to break down it adds nutrients to the soil uh, there's a lot of different organic mulches like like compost uh, there's bark chips uh, things that tend to break down those tend to be better because they they add to the soil whereas if you use a rock mulch like decomposed granite or decorative rock they don't really break down but they still help you know keep weeds down and, and make the area look kind of nice so keep in mind that when you're landscaping whenever you can add mulch to the soil it helps in numerous ways again just by main, you know keeping weeds out uh, holding in moisture moderating soil temperature and a lot of other different benefits that it's important to, to do An important part of any landscape is irrigation. Some people prefer to do it by hand, which is okay if you never go on vacation or leave town or anything like that. But even sometimes when we're, when we're watering by hand, it's just not enough or we don't do it often enough to take care of the needs of the plants. And so most people like to use a, an automated irrigation system like drip irrigation or a spray system for your lawn. Keep in mind that whenever you're doing any kind of planting, you've got to have a plan to irrigate it. If you use drip irrigation, make sure that you use uh, the right emitter for each plant. It all depends on, on what you're doing there. But the biggest question most people ask is, um, how often do I water and how much? And that all depends on soil type and the exposure and everything else. My answer to that is, you know, you want to water enough to wet the entire root zone. And then when you water again, you want to make sure that the soil's had a chance to dry out a little bit in between. And so the best way to figure that out is to go ahead and, you know, get your drip system in place and then run your system for a period of time, like with your drip irrigation, at least for half an hour, an hour or more. And then once you run the system for that period of time, wait a little bit and then do a little test hole to the side of the root ball, dig down around 10 to 12 inches deep, and just see how moist or dry the soil is. You know, if it's moist enough, you can reach in there and grab a clump of soil, squeeze it, and it'll make a ball that's good soil moisture. If it's standing water and, and really muddy, that's probably too much. You don't need to water as much. So that kind of, that'll help you get a good idea of how, you know, how much water to use. And then the, the next question people have is, how often do I water? Again, you, you know, once you figure out how many minutes or hours to water, you know, the next question you want to answer is, when do I water again? And uh, you do the same thing, you wait like a day or two, and then you do another soil test and just examine the soil. If it's still moist, hold off a day or two for watering, and then finally you'll figure out how often to water and then use that as a, as a baseline. So by doing that with your irrigation system, whether it's a spray or a drip, you should be able to deliver the right amount of water to your plants at the appropriate time. Keep in mind during the summer months when you do planting, you need to water a little bit extra more because of the heat and everything else. It's important to make sure you keep those roots a little extra moist. You never want it to get to the point where it gets a little bit too dry, then you're gonna have some browning or possible dying of plants. Once you get your landscape in place, the most important thing you can do is to continue to maintain it. If you plant your garden, your landscape, and then you don't do anything thereafter, things are not gonna look really good. So, a couple important things to keep in mind is, you know, one maintenance thing is just making sure that the irrigation system is working properly. Check it on a regular basis. Uh, you know, the best thing to do is just get up in the morning when your system is running, get yourself a cup of lemonade or something like that, walk around and just make sure everything is working properly. Also, uh, you know, do your little bug watch as you go through your, your yard and everything. Look for insects or any kind of pests that may be affecting your yard and take appropriate action. Um, pruning is important too. A lot of times, you know, these if we don't do necessary pruning, you may have certain plants that get too big in a certain area and then it becomes a real massive job to take care of it properly. So as you're walking through your landscape, make sure you have your pruners with you. If you see any branches or whatever that may be blocking the, the, the flow of water out of, a, out of a spray head for your lawn, make sure you prune that. Um, look for brown spots in your, 
your lawn and try to figure out why they're, they're that way. It could be inefficient water, it could be a fungus or an insect, but the sooner you find out, the easier it is to treat. So keep in mind, maintenance is a necessary integral part of, of maintaining your landscape and you have to just be checking it on a regular basis and make sure everything is, is doing good. Once again, I'm Steve Packer, plant doctor at Moana Nursery. We've just visited, reviewed important landscape design ideas that can help you as you put in your landscape and maintain it through the years. Uh, be sure to visit us at one of our three locations.